What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Sales and Entrepreneurship series, where we're going to be talking about sales, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and the marriage between the two. And today, I am really, really happy to have Timothy O'Dain with me, talking today about sales strategies, the importance of it, and we're going to talk a little bit about on the leadership side, from on the sales professional side. And I actually met Timothy. Actually, I've never met Timothy in person. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I've That's never met Timothy in person. I've only met Timothy. We, Timothy and I talk a lot via LinkedIn. So that's the power of social media, right? And a lot of the things that I've seen, so um, Timothy post and the references in terms of sales and the development and the strategies have really connected me with me because, of course, a lot of his stuff are real in-depth, hardcore stuff that I could I could definitely resonate with. And I think it's really required that other people need to know. So again, this episode is all about bringing business acumen, business strategies, business expertise, and the same thing for sales, acumen, strategies, expertise to the forefront. So Timothy, my friend, thank you for being on part of the, the, this episode. Um, I'd love for the folks in data for you to tell them a little bit more about yourself. Okay, thanks. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks again, Lyndon. And Lyndon basically said it, you know, I, I really focus a lot on strategy. Um, I'm Timothy. I am very inquisitive by nature. Like, literally, I like solving puzzles and figuring stuff out. Right. And I kind of married that with doing a little bit of studying, experience in different industries and different organizations. Right. So for me, I kind of look at it like, yes, sales is important. Everybody sells everything, but how you go about it and the homework behind it, the strategy behind getting to what you want to do. That's what I try to focus on. I literally try to figure out what are the strategies to get all these things done. Right. But that's just how I look at it. And I like coming up with the strategies for people. So, right. right. Well, I, I like the fact that you say that because again, that, that kind of ties into what we want to talk about today. And here's, here's, here's my own, here's my experience in my years of sales. Mm -hmm. I have found that over, over time, I have recognized a lot that organizations don't always use strategy. We have a team, we have some stuff to sell, we gotta go out and sell it, right? Well, <laughs> so we gotta go out and sell it. But a lot I think of they, huh? I think there's some I think sometimes they do think it's strategy, you know, their strategy may just be a little different, you know, they may Thing that if I hire 20 people and I tell them walk up and down the street, I'll get some sales, you know, and that right, may not right, be the right. that just may not be the best way to go about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it just may not. <laughs> right. And 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 the thing is, is it's so strange because I um to me having a sales strategy really helps your team become a lot more focused. So my first question to you is that based upon your experience um mm -hmm. in, in the different sales industries, like how how often, how often do you really see a sales strategy being implemented? Have you seen that across the board in all the industries? And why, if, if yes, how has it been beneficial? And if no, why is it that you think that most organizations may or may not be using sales strategies? So based upon what you've seen, what do you think is the, the, the pros and cons of that? Based on my experience, I think most organizations try to have a strategy. They really do. They start off by saying, okay, we need to make this amount of revenue or we need to make this amount of money. How are we going to do it? Um, the challenge comes when the decision makers make the decision and say, this is what you need to do. They sit in sessions and they come up with this plan of we're going to do this by January, February, March, April, May. Mm. But unfortunately, by the middle of January, nobody's keeping track of what's right. happening because things change all the time, right? So right. even if you have a plan and you're not going according to plan, instead of actually trying to maneuver a little bit or adjust the plan or make a different, make a different plan, even if you have to, Nobody seems to do that. They, they always tend to wait until the end of the first quarter. And they're like, oh, we're not making, we're not making quarter one target, so work hard on the plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're not making half one, ta half one target, so work hard on the plan. And then you reach the end of the year, and oh my gosh, we didn't make targets. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. But you were making targets in quarter one, so you should have been having this what do we do conversation since from, March, you know? Since that time. From, from quite quarter one, start to adjust and realize, well, maybe our, maybe our marketing plan is bad. Maybe we don't have enough salespeople. Maybe we're targeting the wrong people. Maybe we don't have enough prospects. There's so many things, but you're not going to know unless you're actually tracking what you're doing, setting some milestones and saying, all right, at this point, you need to be here. And if we're not here, we need to take a look and check right. it out. And that is what I don't think is done in right. most organizations. 
I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you things that I have actually experienced. And it's only sometimes when you sit back or as you get older in, in, in anything, you become wiser. Yeah. And I've always seen that, as you said, you know, hitting the targets, they, they say, they tell you to do more, but it's do more of the same thing. That's not achieving anything. Exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I, again, so I, I really do like the point where you said the should, you know, organization should always be looking at how your strategy has been working. If you, even if you're hitting it and doing well, then yeah. you revisit at the end of the month, yeah. right? Yeah. Or no, this end, is not only really from an organization standpoint, right? I, I want to also see as people themselves because if your manager gives you a target at the end of the day, the onus is on you to make your target because if you're in sales, you're obviously looking for some sort of flexible income. You want to make your bonuses, you want to make your targets. And if your boss is not on your back and you're a salesperson, you need to have that drive to also want to do it, right? And I right. think so. It's not just the, yes, the organization gives you a plan, but if you realize, I mean, I know it'll sound bad, but if you realize the plan that you have isn't working, find ways to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Find little things to personalize it to yourself or go with the little extra mile or come up with, okay, maybe this big plan they're giving me no working, but what can I do to make it my flavor and work for me, for me to make my target? Right. Because I've spoken to a couple of salespeople, you know, and they were like, oh, we didn't get our sales target for the years yet, so, you know, we're just there. Mm -hmm. My thing to that was, well, okay, make a target last year? No. Well, for sure, minimum, you're going to get that same target. So how about you just imagine that you have that same target and you start working towards it? Why mm -hmm. wait until they give you a target in February or March and lose two months because you're waiting on a target? And whose fault is that? That's not the manager's fault. Right. It's your fault because you still have to make a target at the end of the year. You know? so it's a kind of from both sides. Yes, the organization has to do, but also I think sales people have to take the onus on themselves to own mm -hmm. that. This is my job to do this, so let me do what I need to do to get it done. Right, and, 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 and that... But that's, that's a really big point because owning that, that, that ability to say, okay, this is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my target. So let me do what I have to do to achieve it. Yeah. It's really kind yeah. of, it's, not everyone does. I mean, you do have, you do have a lot of, I have met some, some really keen serious people who they own it. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. I had, there was a guy I used to work with and he would call me to say, Linda, what do you need to close the numbers? You know? Yeah. So that, that's yeah. the kind of contribution he used to offer to the team. Whereas yeah. you had others who, if they get a sale, they get the sale. If they do get the sale, they do get the sale. Yeah. And they, yeah. they wouldn't really be helping themselves, nor the, nor the organization. But yeah. Yeah. so I think from a, uh, from a leadership standpoint as well, we have those gaps where the leaders aren't driving the importance of having a strategy. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you, I, I think um, one, one thing I've seen a leader do which I try to cheat and borrow sometimes mm -hmm. is I will always, if I'm speaking to people just in general or a sales team in general, I will ask them individually, what are your goals? Because everybody has goals. Your goal can't be to just sit and work in an organization or stay in your current position in life forever. You must have a goal, whether it be right. to purchase a new car, purchase a new house, save for your children, whatever your goal is. So make that person your personal goal, right? So that's now in the front of your mind as a salesperson. Okay, I want to travel to Rome, I just random thing came to me. I want to travel to Rome, I want to take a cruise in the Mediterranean. Okay, cool. To, the, to do that, how much money do you need? How much sales do you need to bring in to earn commission to get to that? Mm -hmm. So let that now be a driving force, right? Because right. if you really want to go, like people always say vision boards, if you have that up on your vision board and you say, okay, 2021, I want to take this Mediterranean cruise. Then every day when you wake up, you need to look at that and be like, well, the only way I'm going to do that is if I win a lotto, which is random chances, or right. if I actually go out and hit the numbers I'm supposed to do. I know that if I call 10 people, I'm going to go to 1031, which is basically an insurance standard. If I call 10 people, then I'm going to get three of them to take my call and I may close one. So guess what? Every time you look at that and you feel like, nah, boy, it's rainfall and I feel like making that drive today. Right. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you make that drive and you don't see that person, then you're not going to take a trip, right? right. So the leader basically brought it down to your personal goals, propelling you to meet the organizational goals. Right. You know, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's, it's one of the first things that I learned in, um, in automotive sales in 2003. Yeah. The first thing that we did is that he had us fill out a budget sheet. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when he had his target set for us, he was showing us our personal objectives, the money that we needed to make each year, family yeah. whatever it is and he was saying yeah, if, yeah. If, if you hit your personal goals you'll always take care of your your um company goals your, com your company goals 
Yeah, yeah, that is actually good. That's really yeah. good. And um, so that was one of the first things. And it's, it's, it's something that I've always used yeah. um, up until I left, uh, up until I left Massey in, in 2018. Every year, we yeah. would try, well, I mean, yeah, some people just didn't want to share, you know, they didn't want to yeah. do, they felt it wasn't exciting enough for them. Yeah. But nonetheless, I, and if, if someone was coming in brand new to me, I, I would also use that as a guide because apart from just giving them their KPIs to say, well, this is what the organization wants, I would kind of hold that in front of them as their own carrot. Correct. Like, what Correct. do you want to achieve? You know? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, you said two things there, right? You did the industry, you did the um, insurance industry standard, which is 1031. Yeah. Uh, for how, do you still see people using that? Not like it's obsolete, but yeah. I think people don't even use that as a guide to understand, okay, based upon the number of calls you've made or visits or emails you've actually sent yeah. out, these are the, the actual traction or conversions you've made to at least have a meeting. If, if you want to, if, if yeah. you're just talking the early stages, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least just have a meeting and then how it moves down from there. Again, that was something that I learned in the very beginning. It's something yeah. that, I, well, I use it a little bit more now through the CRM. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. do you see that as being a, a, a standard thing? And, and would you still say it's a best practice? I don't even know if 1031 is still the standard, in all honesty, because in the insurance industry, when I was in it, it was about a numbers game. Yeah. If you see this amount of people, then statistically, this amount will meet you and statistically you choose one out of three. But I think when I moved into telecoms and UTSCT and Huawei, particularly in Huawei, my, my focus completely changed because it no longer right. became a, it's very focused, it no longer became a numbers game and it became a quality game. Mm. So you're no longer trying to see 10 3, one you're trying to target the two that you need or the three that you need because if you get two out of the three, you're still going to hit your number. Right. And it would, no, that is a long game. So there's no longer just, hey, can I meet you? It's okay, well, who are these people in this organization? You build out a nice, a nice um, organizational chart. You start to build relationships with them. You, you right. mark where you're going. It's, it's like what you're talking to is really a lot of strategy, figuring out, okay, well, Okay, a good example is if I'm trying to talk to someone in an organization, I think I, you mentioned this sometime before, you can't just talk to the, in the IT sales, you can't just talk to the IT manager. You would also need to talk to the finance manager. You'd also need to talk to someone on a CEO or general manager level to approve it. And believe it or not, you also will need to talk to the secretary because if you want to meet the boss, the boss stuck in your secretary knows the schedule, right? Mm-hmm. So you need, you, need, right. you need to talk to the assistant for the assistant to get you in to meet them. So it's a lot more planning and strategy that needs to go into that. And I think it needs to be a mix mm-hmm. because you can't spend all your time focusing on massive, massive deals, but at the same time, you're not getting any revenue coming in. So you, you need to find a balance between right. the two where, yeah, you have your transactions that are going to close like that. You know, that's going to close your eyes or close your That's getting done. You yeah, have your relationships there. Yeah. But at the same time, you still need to get some new business to get new people and more people to talk mm-hmm. about you. And I think that's where... That's what I like, the, the actual strategy of being like, oh, okay, you don't know anything about me or my product or my service. Okay, cool. how do we change that with minimal effort for the most effect? Like, how, what is the best way to do it instead of running up and down, waving my hands like a crazy man, getting tired and not getting returns? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's where it goes back to the question you asked. So, yes, you should have some sort of CRM. Even if it's Excel or Word or piece of paper, you right. should try to yeah, track so the CRM. How you must have something to track what your effort is and what is the return on your effort because basically uh, every business person will tell you profit and loss. Everything is about the PL, you know, how much energy and effort are you putting into something? And at some point you have to cut off. If you're if you're not tracking it, then really you can't what you're doing. It. Yeah, yeah, you just don't know what you're doing, you know. So you yeah. definitely need some sort of serum. Yeah. Um the quality over quantity really stood out to me in your in your last point because I do remember being asked to make more calls, make more calls. If, even with the team, like as a team leader, I would have the conversations with my own senior and he would say, well, you know, they're not making a, a lot of calls. Mm. But I was always concerned with not so much with the volume, but the quality of the call. Because yeah. if, if I can make a lot of calls and, and, and not be getting through because I could just be, in, that approach is totally incorrect. Yeah. You know, for the, for the, <laughs> and again, it all comes down to the industry that you're in. Correct, correct. You know? And once we, what we did is that we had really changed our, we changed our service model. So we were yeah. box sellers from before, but yeah. now we were changing that box into a solution type service. Yeah. 
Yes. So we had to now adjust the way that we were selling, and which yeah. really meant that it wasn't a matter of just picking up the phone and just making a whole set of calls to say this is what I've got in the day, because yeah. the conversation really had to be different. Yeah. So I, I like the point that you made that quality over quantity, and again, it's really based upon the industry, yeah. is, is really, really important. And the second point that you also made there is really having a mix, because you can have your low, medium, and high-hanging fruits. Correct. You know, Correct. and it's really Correct. what you want to, to yeah. come to your to come into your business, you know? Yeah, and it made um, a valid points because most of the industries now is unless you're in a specialized industry industry where only you can sell it, there's a lot of competition and yeah, yeah. It, it's just no longer a box because people can afford it. <laughs> they yeah, don't they don't need you anymore, you know. <laughs> they don't need you anymore. So you really have to build relationships and show that you're adding some sort of value by giving them a solution or something something that helps them along the way. So that's actually a very valid point also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you suggest that people really, okay, so I, I'm, I'm new into sales and the reason why I'm looking at that too is because I started, I did a, I started something in January just to kind of help people. It is January, the first month of the new year and this is somebody's first month, this is somebody's first yeah. introduction into sales. Yeah. Um, what else, I, I, we'll talk more about maybe, maybe the manager after, but as a sales person, what advice would you give a, a new sales person getting, in, getting into the business? Um, I like to start. I'm very honest, very straightforward person. I really beat around the bush. So flat off the bat is not easy. Right. Sales is not an easy industry, an easy profession. Get some thick skin. Um, you're not going to close every sale. Just be willing to walk away if you feel like you have to walk away and definitely trust your instinct. You will, as you get more experience, your instincts will get better but always trust them. If you feel like this is really going south quickly, All stop, right. take a breath and figure out, okay, how do I pull this back in? If you realize there's no way to pull it back in, before you just kick it to the curb, figure out, okay, well, what can I replace it with? Let me find something else to replace it with. Let me find somebody else to focus on and ask questions. Don't, um, yes, there is Google. <laughs> Some people are professional Googlers. Uh, right. I'm not one of those, but I prefer to call and ask somebody a question or send somebody a question or, I have found that like in the sales industry in general or even business in general, people actually don't mind answering a question. You're not going to know until you ask if they, sometimes people say they're busy, which is fine. If you're busy, you're really busy. But generally, if you ask somebody, I can talk to you for two minutes, you know, I just have this question on a box of you. Right. Generally, don't say no one. That's how you gain knowledge. You know, that, that's how you, you gain knowledge. You need to understand everything in the sales process and that, that's how you gain knowledge. Yeah. What would be some of your strategic best practices for a new rep? Like, like um, things that they should, like the, the, the things that they should make their staples um, on a, as a data, from a day-to-day standpoint. Definitely build your routine. Don't get lazy because in a sales environment, you tend to manage your own time a lot. Mm. If you were working and as a teller before some sort of uh, an organization where you can office between eight to four once you're in sales, at some point you're gonna have to hit the road and go and see those customers or you're gonna have a little bit more flexibility. Don't be lazy. Just pretend like you have to be in the office. So even if you're not in the office, wake up, get yourself ready for eight o'clock, get in the laptop, start making the calls, um, plan for the week ahead, know what you have to do in advance. Probably not going to stay the same because right. stuff happens all the time to make right. changes. But guess what? It's easy if you have a plan that you already set out to say, well, okay, eh, something happened and I have to do X, Y, and Z. So then you could go back to your plan and say, well, look, I wasn't able to get you this on Tuesday. You know, but you know what you have to do before the anyway. Don't, uh, I don't know, maybe it's my age or something. Again, older than I can't remember as much, but I need to track crap on my phone yeah. or write it down. I need to know, I need to make sure that I'm doing everything that I need to do because sometimes so much comes at you that you tend to forget and you really don't want to get things slipping under the rug or falling off, especially if it's something you told a customer that they're going to do. If it's something that you tell somebody that they're going to do, I mean, your word is basically all you have yeah. because they're now starting to trust you. So if you tell somebody you're going to do something, make sure you do what you tell them you're going to do it. That's so if true. not, give them a call, let them know, but you'll just leave it like, yeah, well, you know, that, no. if you tell somebody you're going to do something, make sure you do it and you're going to, need to ensure that tracking what you do. If you're not going to, you may not have a CRM to use as yet, you could probably advise him as the best one to start <laughs> off as an entry level, but you're going to have to have something, whether it be a phone, a piece of paper, whatever it is, write it down on something and stick it in a car, whatever, but just make sure you track what you need to do so nothing starts to stop. All right. What would you suggest for managers in terms of their, whether they're a new manager or they're already looking at changing the ad hoc way 
of leading the team to say, well, I'll just go and make more calls, but really now uh, mm-hmm. making that adjustment to really support their team in a strategic way. I think that depends on the industry and the management style because some managers will have pressures from their seniors, right? Where it'll be like, hey, you need to make that target and I don't wanna, I don't care who you're doing. Them. And True. The, how they deal with that pressure, maybe passing that pressure directly on to their team and being like, hey, I don't care if you're gonna sit here till midnight and make 200 calls, do it, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? Some other managers, obviously that's not the approach I would recommend. Um, right. I think managers should somehow figure out how to balance and be a good middle act because when you need to exert pressure, you exert pressure, but you have to know your team. Some people need the pressure because they need someone to help them focus. Yes. Some people need the freedom. Yeah, go ahead and do it. You could do whatever because he's going to hit my target. Some people actually need the advice, need to sit and coach them. Again, in sales, people tend to feel shy to ask questions. They may not come to you, but as a manager, you need to figure out my team. I realize you need a little coaching because you may be new, or maybe it's a new industry, or maybe a new person in the organization. You're not sure how to handle it. So as a manager, you need to actually be very actively contacting your team, having little one-on-ones on them. If it's once every week, once every two weeks, you have your team meetings, but give them a call. Hey, how are you good? I saw this in the pipeline for a while. What's happening? So again, stuck. Need my help with something, and have that one-on-one conversation with them. Because in a group environment, if you have five sales people, or one person real mashing it up, or one person real suffering, the middle people are probably not going to talk because they don't. They know they're not mashing it up. Otherwise, they don't have their hands up, and then they don't want to seem like they're suffering, so they're not going to say anything. So they could be real struggling, and they're not going to say it in a group environment. So you need to have that. Even if it's a call or a message, just That's check right. in with them and really see what they're doing. That's right. So, and, and again, Timothy, I, I love the things that you're saying because those to me are best practices where you have your team, where you are dealing with them collectively as a group. But of course, yeah. because you know that this person is in your best interest, they are under yeah. your charge. You really take that personalized approach and do one-on-ones with them to, to yeah. really identify, listen, these are the gaps. This is what I need for you to be doing um, towards, you know, achieving X. Yeah, yeah. I want to flip it to the organizational standpoint now. Mm-hmm. From a standpoint of onboarding, mm-hmm. you bring in five reps, or you bring in two reps. I have found sometimes, and I'm just saying this from my standpoint, and you can maybe give it to you from your experience as well, that the on, like, there's no real onboarding when it comes to bringing new people on, getting them involved in the culture, understanding maybe the sales process a little bit. Yeah. Most of my onboardings have been a walk around to the organization. These are, these are who these people are. Yeah. And then when I get to my desk, I have a series of things that I have to go and study. But apart from that, that's it. And I have to do some product knowledge. And that's it. Yeah. There was one instance where I had the guy, only, I only met the guy once. The guy that I was taking over from. Yeah. You know? And the rest yeah. of the, organi- the organization just had something which was called an orientation. Yeah. Apart yeah. from that, the onboarding wasn't a solid strategy to really get the team to understand the culture, understand the product, understand the value prop. Do you think that is something that, and, and I'm, I, I'm going to go out on a limb to say maybe, I don't think that is a standard thing, but do you think that that is something that come organizations should be adopting? And what have been some of your onboarding experiences to say, you know, just to give an example as to what maybe, what have merely worked out well for you yeah. um, in, in, in your sales career? Um, my experience was similar to yours for most organizations, which is I come in, there's a orientation, which was really mostly focused on HSSE. Right. Which you can yeah. and can do it. Exactly, yeah. A lot of it was, a lot of, exactly, it was yeah. <laughs> a lot of it was HSSE. A lot of it was It wasn't really about the organization. It was like, I don't fall long here. Don't do this, don't do that, basically. <laughs> um, and then there was the documentation. So you get a link and okay, there's the internet and these are the things you need to learn. And this is where the Excel is. And this is your laptop or this is your desk. And this is what you do. Right. Um, I had a flip side in one of the places I worked where they do all of that. You do the orientation and you have to learn all these slides and you have to learn all these presentations to learn all that, but they actually assign you a mentor. So oh. you have this mentor who's like a mid-level manager. Obviously, managers are busy, but that person checks in with you once a week, ask, answer any questions you have. If you have a call with them, you just that, to, make sure that you, to make sure that you actually understand the company's culture. Mm-hmm. companies processes they may not be able to answer all the questions but they can then push you on to who you need to talk to right. because when you go to an organization for the first time 
you don't know who to talk to to get stuff done. I mean, you're not going to harass them all the time, but it's easier to send that person a message or send them an email. And what they will then do is now give you a, a warm introduction to the person that has to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get something done and the person not taking you on because obviously they don't know who you are. They don't know your name. But if manager X sends an email saying, hey, this is Timothy, he just started, I'm his mentor. Could you help him organize this? All of a sudden, you get a call back and it, yeah. your process to integrate into that the organization is, is a lot easier because you have that help for three months now. I have never seen that and I, I, I love that. Yeah, I, it, was, it, was, it, was that good. it was good. Even if it has it to understand. With, yeah, even if it has nothing to do with sales strategies and playbooks, that alone, oh. I think, adds yeah. the, the culture of the organization, the processes to talk to the people. So yes, you're learning all your products and you're learning, you have your sales tricks and then giving your sales training, but at least getting into the organization, understand the culture and the processes, it was a lot easier using that method than HSC orientation and right. learning the slides. That was, yeah, so it was a little different. Right, right, right. So, so in relation to the onboarding, yeah, you, the organizations really should have a- I would recommend some sort of mentoring. Yeah, and a mentor. Yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe not a, it doesn't have to be a manager. Like I said, managers are busy, but maybe like a team lead or somebody who has been there long enough to help the new person coming in. You know? Right, 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 right. All right. So in terms of, if it is, are we wrapping up a little bit? What would be some of the things that you would like to really leave? Like what are some of the main things that you would love to see change from an organizational standpoint, approach to, approach to sales, and then from the sales professional standpoint? In their approach to sales in general, and we, I mean, you could be it from you could allow it to be on the strategic end, yeah. or you can allow it to be a, just on a generalized thing. What would be some of the things that you'd love to see change? From an organizational standpoint, I would like the um, from the executive level, it's a lot easier for salespeople or people in general, the lower, lower level people who never feel appreciated or feel like it doesn't matter to them. Mm -hmm. If you can explain what is the purpose of the revenue and how does it fall into your company's strategic mm -hmm. plan for the next five years. Right. Because almost every salesperson I speak to says, well, yeah, I have, I have this target to make. And when I ask them what it's for, I don't know. My manager gave I it to no me. I have no idea. Right. So I don't know if that's, like, maybe you're not supposed to share it. But to me, if I know I have to make $10 as a sales rep, and my team has to make a thousand dollars. I would like to know that this thousand dollars will help the, will help the organization renovate a location, purchase a piece of land to build a building. I would like to know what my money is going towards from an organizational standpoint, not just paying salaries and paying bonuses. What is my contribution to the organization? How is that helping the organization grow in the medium to long term? Right. And from a individual salesperson standpoint. Um, it's not just about doing a job. It's about serving a purpose and helping somebody out. If somebody's buying something from you, it means that they have a problem or they have something that needs to be fixed. You don't go to put gas in your car if you don't need gas in your car. Right. It's, if you all had electric cars, there would be no gas stations. So if somebody is coming into your stationery store to buy a pen, they need a pen. So Every time you sell somebody something, you're filling a need that they have. So just keep that in mind, you know, because you want to give them a proper service and it could be the worst day of your life, but they could also be having a bad day. So anytime you interact with somebody from a sales perspective and you're trying to sell them something, just remember you're actually doing a service to them, you're helping them. So try and be happy, try and smile, make sure that when you finish sell them that product, they're like, yeah, but this, this fella really, this mm -hmm. girl, they're really to me and my problem I was solving right. today and they feel happy you know they feel a little better right Timothy my friend I you see that that point that you left there with the organization sharing their purpose yeah <laughs> that ooh, that's a that's a big one because again <laughs> as a as a as a consultant not too long ago I knew that there were one or two organizations that then people never knew what they were doing it was just a matter yeah. of there's a revenue you have to earn yeah yeah um even when it came to you know, we didn't touch on this, so we cannot touch on it now. Even when it came down to sales meetings, yeah. the sales meetings didn't have a purpose in it, meaning that yeah. guys, we we here to achieve this, and you know, it's and it wasn't yeah. a matter, it wasn't consistently being reinforced. Yeah. You know? And then sometimes the sales meetings had no strategy in it. Like it wasn't it was it, again coming from a sports background, yeah. Every huddle 
had a fully. Yeah. You know, what it was a defensive strategy. Yeah. What's your point? Whether it was a defensive strategy or, or, or an offensive strategy. Yeah. Um, and I really do think that as a really, sh- a, like a missed component because, and I don't want to speak in a general, I don't want to say this for all industries, but I think that there's yeah. a missing thing where you go to a sales meeting, as you would have pointed out, and it's numbers driven. It's what do you do? What is this? What is that? And a lot of the times people don't leave the meeting feeling inspired. Now, you're not going to do a kumbaya yeah. for every meeting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you want people to understand, okay, so this is what I need to do because this is what we need to bring in. Bam, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. You know? And again, I think that, a that good format. Funny. Yeah, I think a good format for sales meetings would tend to be, I mean, you have your agenda, right? You come in and you go through your formalities. Okay, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. But I think at the end of every sales meeting, maybe just for 10 minutes, um, you definitely have a spot where somebody has to say what challenges they're having. Mm. Everything is not going to be perfect every day. Somebody must have some challenge in some account. So somebody must put up their hand and say, okay, this week I experienced this challenge. And they either ask for help for the challenge or they say how, how they overcame the challenge. Right. Second thing that somebody should, somebody should put up their hand and say is, how did I help a customer this week? Mm. What did I do? What did a customer say to me that made me feel like, yes, I achieved something? Because to me, if your customer's not telling you, yeah, but yeah, this was good to know, your customer's not doing something for you, you're kind of dropping short somewhere. Yeah. You're just doing the bare minimum. And at this, at this level, they can no longer just be doing the bare minimum that's required. They need to be going extra to make sure that your customers stick with you when they get well. Mm. Would you say sales meetings are also the best place to do your role playing and your practicing and stuff like that? Yes. Um, one of the best places. The other best place would be having your manager or your mentor ride along with you to customers or sit with you on calls. Right. So it doesn't cause I mean, sales meeting is physically in one location, you know, but one day the manager is busy. Hey, let's, what are you doing today? Where are you going today? Let me come with you. Um, from a customer perspective, they also like that because yes, they're talking to the rep all the time, but what the manager come out and check me, boy, and not, yeah. and not just to ask me for money. You actually have to check to see how we're going and make sure everything's yeah. working. What? Not just to connect you know, so, people, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So from a, from a sale, from a management perspective, from a customer perspective, that's also really good. So yes, role playing is really good in the training sessions, but it's also good sometimes for the mix it up managers or even just come on a call with the customer. Right. Timothy, my friend, I really want to say thank you for sharing. I, I, I'll tell you some of the things when you saw me looking off the screen. I'll tell you what are some of the things that was actually taken down. Um, starting and not having an execution, ownership, goal setting, leadership, quality versus quantity, trust, tracking, and of course, having a general purpose in a meeting. All of those things are these things that are, those are my specific takeaways coming out okay. of of what we spoke about here. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to really share as to your views and your, 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 your expertise and your wisdom as it relates to both on, on, on a strict, from the strategic side, but both from on the sales professional to the sales leadership side. And then of course, on the organizational side, where yeah, can thanks, people, thanks. where can people, if those that would like to follow you, tell us what some of your handles, where they can find you. Um, find me on LinkedIn. I, I do most of my stuff on LinkedIn. Uh, you'll find me, I'm Timothy Odeon. Search me. I, I don't have any fancy name or anything like that. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what I really do my business stuff for. Like I said, I actually turned my scotch drink into a hobby. So right. like, if you want to find me on Instagram and those things, that's fine. But anything business related, look for me, right. Timothy Odeon. And like I said, like I really like to solve problems, fix issues, right. and people bounce stuff off of me all the time. And Honestly, I have no problem answering a question, doing stuff for somebody. Um, I, like I said, you have a question. I ask people questions all the time. Mm. So it would be very hypocritical of me to be like, nah, I answer that fair. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's very easy to reach out to me, Linda. I can tell you, like you said, most of the time we message on LinkedIn or we WhatsApp, yeah, we reach yeah, WhatsApp now, you know, but it it's really easy. <laughs> just shoot me a message and it's fine. And Linda, thanks for having me on. Like, I uh, appreciate you just even thinking enough of me to be like, hey, maybe Timothy can answer some of these questions for this series. So, my, like I said, my goal is just to help people bring value to people and solve problems. Uh, that's really what I'm trying to do. All right. So, Timothy, again, thank you, my friend. Those of you that sat down and checked out everything in, in, in relation to this episode, thank you again for your time. If you found this helpful, valuable to yourself and anyone else, please feel free to share it with them. Of course, you'll have the respective links. 
at the bottom of the pages. Like and subscribe so you'll have, the, uh, you'll have an understanding as to what's coming up in the up, uh, upcoming episodes. All right, guys, take care. Peace.